Hello, my name is Andrea. I am a developer relations engineer at Ava Labs, and today I'm going to show you how you can deploy your own Avalanche subnet in a local network using Avalanche CLI. First thing we need to do is to open our documentation page on docs.avax.network. And here under the subnet section, you will find how to use Avalanche CLI and there is how to deploy a subnet on local network. So the first thing we need to do, and because we are using Avalanche CLI, is talking about this installation. So if you haven't done this, it's a three steps installation, which you run this line to download and install the binary, and then you add Avalanche CLI to your path and your path permanently as well. Uh, so now that we have done this, I'm not going to go through this process because I already done but you know you will be ready to go when you are able to say avalanche dash dash version and if you get an output that looks like this then you're ready to start using avalanche cli so before we dive any deeper into how to create a subnet configuration i want i just want to show you how to navigate these tools because i, I think that this tool really improves how developers work on configure and deploy subnets so to see what commands are available here, we can go avalanche help. And this is going to show us all the commands available in this level. So there is of course help, there is key command that is going to help us uh, like creating and managing our signing keys for testnet. I think this also has support for ledger. And there's also the network command to like anything related to your locally deployed subnets. So either start the network, stop the network, whatever you need related to the network, you will need to use this network command. There's also subnet command, which is the one we are going to be using to create and deploy our subnets. And you can also transact here, sign in and execute transactions. And there's the update command for anything related to updating the, this tool. If we want to go one level deeper, we can go subnet, sorry, avalanche subnet, dash dash help and there we can see how to like add a validator to a subnet create the configuration of a subnet describe like the subnet configuration and so on so first we're gonna be using this create command to create a new configuration for the subnet and then we're going to be deploying it on the, the local network so first of all and we can see like what the process is in here is like following this tutorial you have the as a you, you need to have this configuration created so it's going to be this way let me just go again with uh, up with our terminal here and I'm gonna be putting this here so I can change so it's changed from Windows um, so it says avalanche subnet create avalanche subnet create and the name of the subnet my subnet so this is going to guide us through the whole process of creating the, the configuration file so first we need to specify the virtual machine that the first chain inside our subnet is going to be running so we're gonna go for the subnet EVM which is a slightly modified EVM um, virtual machines so there's some uh, also the option for custom virtual machine i'm not sure if it's fully supported right now in this version of the avalanche cli so we're just gonna go for subnet evm and then you need to specify a chain id so this chain id must be unique for any other uh, evm out there so the best way to get to know like one chain id is to go to chain list chain list is this site where like any virtual EBM blockchain is, is listed. So for instance, we have here the Avalanche C chain and its chain ID. So the, ver the, the best way to get one chain ID is make sure to include test nets and then you just start typing a random number. And if you cannot find any coincidence, it means that it's not taken yet. So we can use that. So then we paste it in here and just be aware that this green mark doesn't mean that the number is unique. Uh, it only means that you have completed the, the, the field. So now it asks us for the name of the native token, the symbol. We're going to go for test 
and what version of the subnet EVM we would like to run. We're gonna go for the latest one and then we are going to configure everything related to our disk, um, our fee, fee configuration. So if we're going to play around and we don't want to uh, get into the details of how fees are going to work, we can just go with these sitchin settings. Uh, if you are building some application that requires a high throughput or like any other fee configuration, you can just go into detail of how these fees are going to work. I can show you around like when we list how this this file looks like, like the configuration file. After we created this, I will show you what are the fields that you can customize in here. So, but for now we're gonna go for switching settings. And then we need to specify like who is going to receive the tokens at the beginning, like in Genesis. So if you are going to go on production, always use customize your airdrop. Never ever use airdrop for 1 million tokens to the default address because the default address is an address that everyone that has gone through this tutorial already knows the keys to. So we're gonna go for this option because we are just playing around, but do not use it in production, okay? Uh, then we would like to, if we would like to ask any pre-compile to modify the EVM. So this EVM, uh, pre-compiles actually help us to create some specific configuration or some uh, special features in like in a virtual machine level so I uh, we're not gonna go for them but I want to show you around like what kind of pre-compiles we have here so native minting it, it, this is a pre-compile that grant access to some account to start native uh, minting the, the native token so it is especially interesting if you want, for instance, um, some logic, some contract to be able to mint these tokens, you can do it here. You can also work with some contract deployment allow list and transaction allow list that will manage who can, of course, uh, deploy contracts or transact. The thing here is that this is super useful when you are trying to deploy some application like an app chain and you let's say we are building something related to gaming and you don't want any DeFi protocol to come and deploy on top of it uh, so, so you can have actually like an isolated environment for your application so you can select who's able to deploy any contracts here or if you for instance want to create an application that you require your users to have any kind of KYC or be, being subscribed to something or if you want them to be holders of some token in order to start um, transacting with your blockchain then you can select here transaction allow list uh, you can also have a pre-compile that handles everything related to uh, fees upgrades or any configuration that you need to modify regarding the fees and also a reward manager configuration pre-compile so about these managed fee settings uh, pre-compile is really useful when you don't want to go through a whole network update upgrade in order to modify some settings uh, regarding your fees so uh, we're not going to select any of these we're, we're cancelling the pre-compile section and then we are already successfully created the developer the, the subnet configuration so now it's time to deploy our configuration so i just want to show you how this looks like avalanche uh, subnet list is going to show us our configurations available so here we see this is the subnet this is the first chain of the subnet so just like for you to know that a subnet can validate many many chains but one chain can only be validated by one subnet so here we have the first chain inside the subnet the chain id the virtual machine id the type the version and from repo which i'm not really sure what that means but if we go avalanche subnet describe my subnet we can see the configuration that we went through like all these details and if you have gone through the gas config uh, like uh, on detail you are able to set all these parameters it's gonna guide you through through the process for all this so um, that's it and we see as well the, the airdrop address that this is the default address that i was talking to you about 
and we didn't select any pre-compiled so we're ready to go let's go for the deployments so just an important thing to tell you is that if you don't want to go to the for like through the whole process of getting your your configuration in that way if you already have a file you can just use this genesis flag in order to just read out from the file you already have uh, so that's everything if you want to override some uh, configuration you can use the force flag and now that we have that we are ready to deploy and we're gonna go for avalanche subnet deploy my subnet Whoop. my subnet and it's going to ask us if we want mainnet fuji or local network we're gonna go for local network so what this is doing is actually creating a network of five nodes running in our computer this uses avalanche network runner and so when we have these these uh, nodes already up we're gonna be able to connect to them in order to start connecting our wallet to the network and start interacting with it so here are the five nodes that i was talking about let me just go um yeah so these are the five nodes we have and we also have this information for setting up our wallet so i'm gonna set up the core wallet extension and we can go monash networks and add a new one and here we just need to paste the details that we have here this rpc url corresponds to our first node if you see the port here is the same uh, it's talking to this blockchain and we're gonna be connecting here so we just pasted here my subnet we put the chain id copy and the token symbol test so now that we have that set up we are able to copy the the private key of the default account that has the million tokens so i already done this but you just copy here and you can import it the the account here in imported import private key and you will be able to import the account that has the, the tokens in here so we just select it here and if we see here we have already the 1 million test tokens and we can actually start transacting from here like let me copy this address just to send some tokens so if we go send we paste the new address and we send like 200 tokens we can just click send send now and there we go we have already sent the first transaction in our blockchain and if we click in here we see the 200 test tokens already in the second address so that's how you deploy your subnet if you want to stop this network from running you can go avalanche network stop and these will shut down all these five nodes running in the back of your computer and if you want to start them all again you go avalanche network start and you uh, can start transacting again in your subnet so that was everything about this tutorial this was the whole process for how to validate like how to create and deploy your own subnet in local we're gonna be doing more tutorials on how to do this on fuji how to do it like any other a functionality that that you would like to see please leave it like in the comments or uh, reach out so we can start working on what you are looking for as a developer and hope you like it and hope you be able to deploy your own subnet in local with this tutorial so see you around bye